I like what you've done with the place. Kitschy collectibles are such a human inclination. Something busted, Captain? I was thinking about what you said before, after we went to the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker. I reckon you're right. I think I'm ready to stop fretting and fussing and, and ask Junle to go steady straight out. And I'm thinking of doing it here, on the ship. I was kind of hoping you'd offer. The thing is, I can't ask her over like, like this. I mean, look at me. I'm all covered in engine grease, and I ain't showered in nigh on a week. I smell like sweat most days, and, well, don't look too close at my fingernails. I was thinking, hoping, we could stop by Groundbreaker for gas supplies. I mean, only if you're not busy. Or when you're heading through Groundbreaker for something else. You don't gotta change plans on account of me. Anyhow, next time we dock in Groundbreaker, let me know. Because I want to come with. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Rizzo's Lemon Slap. Slap your whole family tonight. This is how Gracious. I was just sitting down for tea. I think I got just the thing, my dear. A few years back, Auntie Cleo's put out a home makeover kit, and I snagged a couple for myself. High-grade shampoo and conditioner. Scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush for? Cleaning around your nails, sweetheart. Gets the engine grease out. Makes your hands soft. Most folk don't got the time. Or bathtubs for such, me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. You want rosish, mock apple and cinnamon, or refurbished ship? We didn't have anything rosish in Edgewater. I heard it smells real pretty, though. I'll just wrap that up for you, since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. You're welcome, dear. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. I hope this fancy soap we got is extra strength. I'm feeling a mite ripe. Oh, thanks, Captain. I'm gonna put these someplace safe. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish for Monarch. Dustback casserole. Saltuna and Xenogold needle mushrooms. And then for dessert, there's a thing called, uh, sweetheart cake. It's made with almond paste and wax gourds. There's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. Thanks, Captain. 
Captain. I know I'm asking an awful lot, but I'm sure it's gonna be worth it. Vittos mock out of sight. A hard fighter for a hard life. Captain, Felix and the Vicar are arguing... We are now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills. I wonder sometimes what they're doing on other colonies. Uh-huh. You ever been off Monarch, Theoka? Before you met the captain, I mean. Nah, I mostly just drank and hunted. As soon as you stop to dream of other things, that'll be the day something sneaks up and eats you. Don't fret. I'm watching you back now. If anything tries to eat us, I'll give it a mighty whack on the nose. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. You watch my back, I'll... Whoa, by the stars, my poor heart. I just about pissed my jumpsuit. Most people don't. Besides, this place is enough to try anyone's nerves. Where should I begin? With the oversized mantisaurs? Or perhaps the rap spewing acid at our walls? The board was right. This place isn't fit for human habitation. And I was a fool for staying. That was a real popular meal 10, 20 years back, before the board tucked tail and ran. These days, everybody's had a belly full of salt tuna. They all want borst, and the mushrooms, well, not many venture out of town, what with the monsters hereabouts. I can whip one up for you, but it'll cost. Here's a menu. Oh, yikes. I can't cover this much, Captain. What? No, Captain, I, I don't want you to do it this way. It's all right, miss. I'm a coward at heart. Made that clear from the outset. Look, Captain, this is the best I can do without putting myself out of business. I'm mighty glad you reckon so. This is gonna take about an hour in the oven. Nothing I can do to speed it. That's just how cooking works. There we are. Now, if you don't mind, I really need to take a leak. My belly's gurgling just to smell it, Mr. Raymond. Thank you so much. A pleasure to help such a charming young lady. You're a gentle soul, miss. Be careful with this one, all right? He's kind of a brute. Oh, gosh. My tongue's rumbling just smelling that casserole.
I'm real sorry about your friends, Nyoka. Ain't no one deserves to go like that. Certainly not folks just trying to get by. Thanks for saying that. You know, after seeing so many people get chomped, trip into sulfur pool, shot by marauders, I always figured we'd die young. But just because you expect it doesn't make it any easier. It's always great. Oh, shit. Next chance we get, I'm buying you a Spectre bottle so we can proper drown this melancholy. Oh, I didn't get a chance to try Spectrum when we went out drinking. Is it any good? It is without a doubt the worst, most foul liquid mankind has ever had the misfortune to invent. You love it. If you stop in the engine room, would you ask Parvati to... We're now in orbit above Fallbrook, Captain. Said you docked three days ago. Want to make a run with me to Stella Bay? Boston.
Just about the cutest little things you ever seen. <laughs> the dust bat casserole Mr. Raymond made smells incredible. Oh, I kind of want to take a little taste, but I'm gonna be strong. Now look how cute these cakes from Cascadia are. Someone even traced little hearts in them. Ah, <sighs> I guess that settles dinner. Thanks for hauling me all over creation, Captain. Well, I was gonna, but then it hit me. I got this nice meal all planned out with music, and I got that soap to scrub up with, but... I don't got nothing nice to wear, Captain. I don't have a head for fashion, and I can't really picture myself in something clean and... pretty. There's this place I heard of in Byzantium, Jollikers Haberdashery. I bet I could find something nigh-on perfect at a place like that. Thanks, Captain. I know I've been asking a lot, but you help me out every time. You're the best.
You seen Arthur today? I believe I hear Felix and Parvati discussing the latest Aetherwave serial.
are now in orbit above Byzantium, Captain. Feeling a little off balance? Posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well traveled spacer. Splendid. I love it. Your walk. Your posture, the cut of your clothes, you carry yourself with the bearing of a noble, but you dress like a barbarian. How deliciously outré. I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs. I'm an artist, darling, not a tweed merchant. I don't sell things. I holiday the world with art. I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? Consider it a standing offer. You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. Uh, I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back-of-the-envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright. There. Love? That's the ultimate luxury, darling. Love. <laughs> oh, gracious me. I don't get why that's funny, ma'am. Oh, my cherub! Who woos for love anymore? That's so... precious. All right, Captain. Here is the absolute best I can do for you. There are some things I simply cannot skimp on, darling. Such a lovely young lady deserves the best. Now stand back. Back, back! I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. Oh, 
can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time, I can... I just have to actually do it now. You know, there's, there's a part Junlei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. Not yet. Not for real. Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. I love Byzantium. Where else are you going to find art, culture? Some crew members are... You're adjusting before you pull. You're anticipating it. You... Of course I'm anticipating it. What if I shoot a friend on accident? That's on account of your stance. You want to lean into it. Embrace it. Work with it. You're in control here, our body, not the gun. Don't let a hunk of metal jerk you around. You've been around powerful machinery all your life. You're always in control, right? I guess that's kind of like when the filler's shooting 600 cans of near-molten sell tuna down the conveyor while I'm trying to tune a belt. Here, stand like me, just so. Hip square, lean forward a little. It's just equipment, and you're just an engineer using it. Ah! Okay, we'll try again later. You'll get it, I promise. I swear. Next time we put in the Groundbreaker, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ask her over. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm having trouble focusing on my work. Oh, you mean Sam? He's just the sweetest, ain't he? A real charmer, my dad'd say. Nah, but I've been thinking on one. Gotta get to know him better, I think. Maybe ask him what he prefers. It ain't nice to give folks a nickname without them giving you the okay first, you know? Of course, that don't stop Felix. We've arrived at the Groundbreaker. Right. She's on her way. How do I look? Oh, my hands have finally stopped shaking. All right, all right. Deep breath. Here I go. Anyhow. So I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now. I ain't need your help. I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. And he handed me his favorite wrench, the one he used for the canner. He was probably half as tall as I was. He didn't scold you for talking back to him? Nah, he was never like that. I always thought it was funny when I get indignant about something. Then he'd watch me do whatever it was, make sure I didn't get hurt, but 
He'd never interfere. I learned a lot that way. I wish I could have met him. Anyone who helped shape you must have been a special person. Crew report. Bioka is drunk. Surprise. Okay, Captain, she's gone. I'm near about vibrating. I'm so excited. So she got here, and, well, she sneezed. She said, Wow, new soap? And I was like, Yeah, rosish. <laughs> Turns out it tickled her nose. Oops. And then she just sort of touched my arm, real gentle like, and Called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. She stood stock still and just said, Oh, real soft. Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, Is that dustback casserole? I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about the things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired, how I taught her to salvage and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor and how it made her want to be more open. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! And then she sneezed again, on account of the flowery soap. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met June Lay at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy screaming to my pillow for like an hour. <laughs> 